Hey guys, Derek here from OKS Hunter. Uh, we just put out some shed hunting material, so hopefully um, anyone who's getting interested and trying their hand at finding a couple shed antlers, or I know a few of you guys have gone out, probably found some bone before, hopefully uh, some of those tips that we have posted up in the blog are going to help you this winter, spring, um, as you guys get out into the woods and find some spots for next year and hopefully find next year's buck. Um, it's kind of a time consuming but fun pastime gets you in the outdoors something you can do with family go for a little hike a little walk um, as you can see this is something that's been a passion of mine for a long time um, i'm pretty lucky that i got to grow up doing this with both of my parents my mom and my dad um, we started this when i was a freshman in high school um, my dad always wanted to uh, go out to buffalo county uh, when i was a when i was a kid we'd always heard about buffalo county the monster deer out there and so for one of our spring breaks uh, from high school, my freshman year, we just took a road trip out there and drove around and um, I ended up emailing Tom Indrabo from uh, Buffalo Country Outfitters and uh, asked him if we could come talk to him and talk about shed hunting and he invited us over. So he invited a family that he didn't know and showed us around his place, showed us some of his amazing, he's got a world class antler collection, but uh, he let us walk his farm uh, two different years. Um, after they had walked it and we picked up some cool antlers out there um, but I just thought I'd share a couple of our uh, shed stories with you so um, this is some of the antlers I found um, my parents have an amazing collection especially my mom has some giant antlers that she has found um, but they're all up at our cabin um, so these are a few that I've got down here at my house we're in my basement right now um, speaking of Buffalo County this is actually the first shed antler I've ever found um, that first weekend that we went out there, um, we went and met with Tom and Tom showed us around his farm and his place. And then we had looked up some public land, not terribly far away in Buffalo County. And we went and walked that public land all day and didn't find anything. There's lots of deer sign, but we didn't find any antlers. And then right at the end of the day, excuse me, right at the end of the day, we were almost done, ready to turn around. And I looked over and this was laying there just like that, time's up laying in the sun. And it absolutely got me addicted to finding shed antlers. So that was my first antler. Pretty awesome five point from a younger deer. But uh, just awesome Buffalo County genetics. So that was uh, one of my favorite finds. My first one. Um, some memorable antlers that I've got here. Uh, this is a buck from up north in the Nicolet National Forest. It isn't huge. Um, but this was a, a deer we chased for... I think four seasons. Um, he had this really cool little unicorn point eye guard sticking out and he had that every year. And one thing that we, we noticed on him is his right brow tine always curled inward. The left one was straight. Um, he was a 10 pointer for a couple years. Um, never got a whole lot bigger than this. Um, but we would always get pictures of him in the late, late fall and winter. He would come into the cedar swamp. Um, the cedar swamp we knew pretty well. Um, my dad was up north, uh, had some time off of work, and he went shed hunting in the cedar swamp and found a really nice five-point antler and a couple smaller ones. And when he brought those home and he showed me this chocolate five-point side, I got something inside me, just got obsessed. I was like, I got to find that other side. We have to find it. So I went up um, one weekend, I think I was by myself, um, the day before Easter. And I went out into that swamp and I said, I'm going to find that other side. And I walked that swamp and I ended up finding the other side to my dad's. And then um, not too far away from that, near this little high ground island inside the swamp, these two were laying, actually touching each other for my first touching match set. Um, so we called this deer split ear. He had a big giant split in his ear one year. And that's how you could tell him on trail camera. The year after this set of sheds, he actually got smaller. Um, so had the same curved brow time, um, but he was only an eight pointer and was even shorter time than this. Um, and then that winter, we think he might've died because we never, we never saw him again. Pictures of him in January and then never saw him again. My dad did get one side off of that um, smaller set, which is pretty cool. Um, a set pretty similar to that. Um, nice dark rack. This one's a special one to me. Uh, this is a deer we called Curly. We had two bucks that we would get on summer together all the time. We named him Curly, this guy. 
because he had curled brow tines and his real curved beams. And he hung out with this other deer that had real tall, straight brow tines that we called ice pick. And uh, one year, dad and I both decided, hey, it's about time we really get serious about hunting these two bucks because we'd seen them for a number of years. And uh, that spring, we went out shed hunting and ended up, uh, my wife actually found this side on top of a little ridge with a runway on it. And then my father picked up this one, maybe about 15 yards away. Still had a little bit of blood on it. <coughs> but uh, that spring we found both of his antlers, which kind of gave us a little bit of um, an area that we didn't really think that he was coming through. Um, a little bit further south than where we thought he was. And sure enough, that fall, my dad ended up uh, finding a spot where two bucks were fighting. There was a bunch of big rubs and scrapes. And uh, he took me in there and we both set up. And that night, I actually killed this buck, my best buck. Uh, Curly is a 10-pointer. He's hanging up on my wall right over there. Really big-bodied old deer, six-and-a-half-year-old buck. Um, so these antlers are actually from when he was five-and-a-half years old. Um, not very huge, but really, really nice sentimental set of sheds there. So it's pretty cool to have the sheds. And then the next year, was lucky enough to take the buck. Um, kind of an interesting one. Uh, from some public ground near where my parents live. Um, didn't hunt this ground much, but found this little pretty cool looking four point side, missing a brow tine. Thought it was really cool antler. Uh, found this not too long after my son was born. Um, and then the very next year, I went back to this area with my parents again and walking a bedding area, I actually found this dead head in a bed back into some cedars. And as soon as I picked him up and I just kind of looked at how his rack was, I thought, holy cow, I think that's the same buck from that shed. So here's probably a year and a half old buck. And I'm guessing this is probably two and a half. But uh, you can see there, definitely the same deer. So that's kind of a cool little piece of history, find a shed. And sadly, somebody must have made a bad shot on him or whatever happened to him. Got the dead head. This old dried up piece of dirt, which is falling apart. <laughs> I found this in Montana while we were elk hunting. It was laying on a sage bush. Almost looks like coral. It's so um, rotted out, dry rot. But from a giant mule deer buck, I saw it laying up there and I thought, holy cow, I think that's an antler. And I picked it up and I don't know, I just thought it was cool. So I kept it. <laughs> um, another pretty interesting one is this mega bean buck. It's got some nice heft to it, really thick, wide, little tiny G2, um, and a big, long G3. But uh, this was one that goes to show you, you never know where you're going to find an antler. Um, where I was walking this day, I was actually scouting in the spring. It was super wet. I was up in the Peshigo Harbor, which is a big, marshy area. Uh, I think it's around 16,000 acres. But uh, I was scouting and sludging through with my hip boots on it was just nasty nasty stuff very little deer sign <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and i got to a spot that had a couple little rubs um older rubs in it with a couple of fresh ones but there was no deer sign from over the winter and i couldn't imagine why a deer would have wintered in there it would have been all ice a uh, little bit of grass just nasty ash and uh kind of brushy stuff but n nothing good for brows and no good food sources close by and i looked up and i could just see a beam sticking out through the grass and these tines were down in the water and it was frozen in and i pulled it up and i couldn't believe the size to it and then a uh, kind of interesting story about this one is i was at a buddy's place we usually go uh the thursday before gun opener here in wisconsin everybody kind of cabin hops and goes and sees each other's places and we were at my buddy scott's place um, having a few beers and talking smart about what we were going to do the coming weekend. And he had a shed sitting up on top of a cabinet. I had a fifth point, but it looked very similar. And I said, Scott, why don't you grab that shed down? Let me have a look at that. And as soon as he grabbed it down, I could tell. I said, hey, I think I got the, uh, the other side to that buck. And I took out a picture of this one. And it turns out it was the same side. Um, this shed was from the year before. And then he had found the shed from the year after, and it was a buck he knew about they hunted, but I don't think they ever got. 
So kind of a cool story. That's kind of what's neat about these is each one has a little story and you kind of get to know some things about them, which is pretty cool. Um, see if I can get this guy off without knocking everything down. This is a pretty cool looking one here, real heavy. Got some crazy formation here. Um, I was actually in a spot with my buddy Adam um, during second weekend of gun season and I was doing a drive for him. So he was posted up on the southern end of the slough with all this wet kind of mix of cedar and swampy grass. And I was pushing through there uh, toward him and I was ducking under some thick stuff and I saw a little raised area that looked like it could have been a bed. And as soon as I ducked under a cedar and got to it, um, this shed was laying there. Didn't quite look like this when I found it. It was pretty chewed up, so I did a little work on it. Uh, but big, heavy antler. This was all all there. Very cool. Laying right in the bed in this thick area. Um, so that kind of tipped me off. Oh, bucks do use this area late season. Um, so I ended up going in there and do some muzzleloader hunting in there the next year. And I didn't see a buck from that spot. I only hunted it one time. But I did see a whole bunch of does in there. So finding the shed kind of let me know. Okay, so you know bucks deer are using this bedding area during late season so another thing that sheds kind of taught me pretty cool antler there um obviously you find lots of deadheads that deadheads up from northern minnesota uh, this one's from near peshigo um yeah lots of cool antlers certainly tons of little ones mixed in but these are some of the better ones i've found and that i like to display the moose are my favorite um, have a lot of fun walking around looking for moose antler. Been up to northern Minnesota a bunch of times and finally found my first moose rub shed. So when you talk to anybody who searches for moose antlers, you always look for a, a rub from moose, fresh rub from the winter because moose will rub their antlers in the winter and a lot of times they'll knock their antlers off. Kind of notorious for knocking their antlers off while rubbing in the winter. So I've probably checked 500 moose rubs and never found an antler under one and then last winter I was walking with my buddy Lane and my buddy Brian and I found a rub and I said hey Lane there's a rub up ahead I bet you there's an antler under that one and I was walking up and he goes oh yeah there must be one right and I said holy shit you're not gonna believe it there is it's the tiniest moose antler I've ever seen but uh pretty cool to find one finally under a rub of course a moose is gonna knock that giant off making a rub <laughs> yeah these are some of the moose antlers i found a couple cool ones i'm hoping to find some more this spring um, i'm actually hoping to get my son his first shed antler ever uh, we went walking a little bit last year but we got a few spots i want to take him to try so hopefully he can find his first antler and get him get him addicted because he sure likes coming down and playing with him so those are a few of the shed stories. Um, I hope you guys can kind of see that by finding these antlers and kind of putting the puzzle pieces together it can really help you in your hunt um, if you let it. If you think about it as a completely separate entity and it's just an antler, you found it here or it was random, then it's probably not going to help you. But if you're able to think about it, it's just another piece to the puzzle, just like finding a rub or a scrape or a bed. Finding the antlers can, can definitely help you out. Uh, I know it's helped us out a lot. So thought I'd share a little bit and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. All right, good luck this season.